previously on the Trading Card Preservation Society. Why would you do that? It's the ugliest thing I've ever seen on a trading card, and I've I've seen a lot of ugly trading cards. It's just <laughs> terrible, terrible, ugly, awful base set. I call this meeting of the Trading Card Preservation Society to order. In attendance tonight is myself, Matt F. from HeartbreakingCards.com and Dave the Cardboard Junkie from CardJunk.Blogspot.com. Hello! We are coming to you live from the parking lot of the Hilton Hotel in, um, where are we, Marietta, yep, Georgia? Marietta, Georgia. Uh, we, we don't look creepy at all. <laughs> yeah, so two... Two guys with uh, beards sitting in the parking lot talking uh, to themselves. Uh, that's not weird at all. Um, no, nope, not one bit. <laughs> uh, although we live in the Atlanta area, we live about, you know, an hour away from each other. And so whenever we do the podcast, we usually just do it over uh, Google Chat and record it. And, um, you know, it's a lot more complicated than being able to do it in person. So this is sort of fun that we get to try and see what normal people do when they have like a studio or have We're a professional doing it live, have a, baby have a professional operation <laughs> um no professionalism here so this card show is yeah it's east east cob i think east is, cob right? uh yeah. card show there's two others one in roswell one uh the perimeter uh i've never been to the one in the perimeter um yeah i've never yeah that's i believe that's where 285 and 400 connect um roswell is up 400 uh exit eight i think mm -hmm. yep. and uh this is right off of windy hill if you are in atlanta so uh, it's about a equal drive for both of us so it's a nice halfway point yeah it, it's like the nicest hotel i've ever seen a card show at <laughs> like i don't know how much i have to pay to reserve these rooms but um so we uh haven't done a podcast since um I looked it up, April 17th. Summer hiatus. Um, yeah, right, our summer hiatus. Um, lots of reasons as to why, I guess. Part, part, part of it was I had personal medical issues, not with myself, but with my wife, that sort of took precedent and took took away the focus of you know, anything relating to cards at all. Um, that's sort of, that's all resolved now. Um, and um, then I went on vacation. Um, I went to basically my... My wife's a professor, a college professor. I write, so we have summers off. So we went to, we're from, I'm from Wisconsin originally. She's from Minnesota. And so we went up north for three weeks. So um, I've been busy doing nothing, literally, you know. Um, so I'm glad we can sort of get back on on track with episodes. Oh, what you did, what have you been doing? Uh, You've working. had vacation too, right? Uh, I've had a couple of weeks off, but yeah. uh, it's been stay at home, watch the kids, clean up the house, do nothing type of vacations. Uh, mainly, yeah. I've just been working and and living, <laughs> uh, and you know, got to take a break every once in a while. This this consider this season two. Yeah, right. There you, there go. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> but, a good way to look uh, at it. Yeah. I've had I had a little fun uh, in the meantime. Been watching monster movies right and left. Mm. Uh, an entire half season of ponies has kind of come and gone. Uh, you know, just just doing things. Are there unicorns in ponies? Yes. Well, then you'll be excited when we get to the Alan and Ginter oh, checklist. Already oh, you are. Okay, good, good. I've done my homework. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, when we when we were driving north, we went through Louisville, Kentucky, and I got to go to the Louisville Slugger factory, which I've come to re learn is sort of like it's not originally where it was forever. It's sort of been repurposed into the downtown of um, Louisville, but it's an amazing sort of place if you're interested in baseball in any way. Uh, they have a huge wall of all the like all the little signatures that are burned into the um, bats. They have uh, um, each of them from like, you know, Ty Cobb to 
there's a spot that I, I took a photo. I don't remember what player it is, but it's like the engraving is coming soon, you know? Um, and then Tops also has a exposition right now of um, pop culture stuff. And so I won't, ruin it, ru- I won't ruin everything that's there. There's some really amazing stuff, but my favorite part was a Bat- uh, Adam West era Batman costume, which, <laughs> which Tops claims has never been on display before. Um, in person, I didn't, I don't know, in person it's almost like he's wearing purple rather than blue. And I don't know if that's what, what film was back in the day, when what, what it looked like on film. And after, maybe look back at some episodes to see if it really does show up as purple or if it's the blue that you would think Batman is. But Or maybe it's the fading over the, whatever, 50 years. Yeah, I remember back, show. In, back in the day, uh, Batman was kind of purplish. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it also may be due to the recording. Um, Batman came around the same time as Lost in Space, Star Trek, all those mm-hmm. really garish colors, yeah. uh, colored TV. Uh, because back then, I mean, not everybody had a color TV. So if you're going oh, yeah. to film in color... You wanted it to be really colorful, uh, just so... Like, has there ever been anything more red than those red uniforms on Star Trek? Oh, hell no. Like, you know, like... That's the, like... the purest <laughs> red you yes. can ever find, which gets redder as the blood flows they... from the poor little ensign. And, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Who had to go on the away yeah. trip. <laughs> poor little guy. Also, they had a Star... Uh, sorry, a Superman... They had, speaking of Star Trek, they have Uhura. They had an Uhura dress. Nice. Um, and they had a Christopher Reeve outfit, which was, like, super thin. You could tell the fabric was real, real thin on it. And they had unopened packs of uh, Superman 2. It's sort of weird because you'd have the, they would have the displays. I, I post about it on my blog if you want to see more photos. But they sort of had the, uh, the uniform on um, a mannequin. And then on the floor, there's this, like, it looks like someone had dropped their pack of cards and just sort of spread on the floor <laughs> and so it's like oh my uh, god get those in penny sleeves or whatever so oh boy so we're at, like i said we're at a card show and we actually met i don't know if you call him a fan a, uh, a peer who collects cards and follows us on twitter um at scooby-doo 79 at scooby like the dog but do is d-e-w 79 like maybe mountain dew i don't know scooby-doo 79 That's uh barry fun. yeah Barry, we met him today. He was, he's from Mississippi, right? Yes. And he came to the show, and he collects non-sports cards, so we give a shout-out to Barry. He couldn't hang around and hang out in the back seat of the car as we <laughs> as we do this, but uh, um, it was cool to meet him. Uh, so we decided to do a $10 challenge, which for... I can't imagine, you know, if, if you would listen to this podcast, you don't know what that is, but um, basically we limit ourselves to $10 to try to find the best... Um, best deal we can. It's not necessarily finding the best value, you know. It's sort of like finding, I don't know, something meaningful or something good. But if you find an amazing deal, don't you know, don't pass it up. But so, um, do you want to go first? All right, I have. What'd you find? Four items. How many do you have? You I got three cards. You got three. Okay. Uh, how about I do one and then you do one sure. and we'll just go back and forth. Okay. Okay, first thing I found, uh, two Kellogg's cards, vintage, of uh, Carl Yastrzemski. Um, Yaz, uh, 78 Yaz was one of the first cards I ever had, so I've always had an affinity for Yaz, and Kellogg's cards are always cool. These are from 1979 and 1980. Uh, They have wonderful cracked plastic and uh yes has the bitch and sideburns that millhouse loves so uh got those uh two for 50 cents and i will take for, photos of these and we'll i'll put them i'll post them on the on our website so you have some kind of clue yes that's what we're talking about <laughs> so kellogg's 3d superstars i got two from yeah two cards and you're only at 50 cents I'm at 50 Jeez. cents okay well i'll do one card for a dollar uh, this is from the same seller, I can tell, based on the <laughs> black um, writing on the on the penny sleeve. Yeah, the scribbly penny sleeve. We went with Bob Euchre. Oh. 
claims to book for 10, sold for a dollar. It has creases. It does, up in the upper left. Uh, this is 66, Bob Eucher. He is a, uh, um, not a brave in these. He's a cardinal, unfortunately. One of these, I don't know what it is with braves becoming cardinals, <laughs> you know, but. Heresy. Um, yep, so, uh. Uh, Bob's from Menominee Falls, uh, Wisconsin. I'm from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Sort of, we're sort of close. Um, I mean, it's all Wisconsin. It's not that far away. Um, and Bob, he, am I, no, I'm confusing him with Joe Torrey. I'll skip that. I'll, I'll edit this out. <laughs> um, anyway, so he's always been a favorite, of course, longtime announcer for the um, Brewers and, you know, basically the star of Major League. I think we can all agree. Oh, yes. Well, ahead of Tom Berenger. So, one dollar. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I noticed. Uh, if you look on the back, read the very last line of the par- bio paragraph. It says, Bob was traded to the Phillies, October 27, 1965. Yep, you've got a uh, traded variation there. Oh, yeah. There are two of them. One of them has the traded line. The other one does not. I think, oh, shit. <laughs> I think the uh, traded version is more rare, but you'd have, wow. I'd have to double check on that. Well, God, maybe I'm rich now. <laughs> I've got awesome. one, but it's to take not a look. creased, so oh. I'm richer than you. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, am I up? Yep. All right. Same seller. What do you think that is? Is that Wacky Packs? That is a Wacky Pack checklist. Oh. I've never seen one of these before. Bazooka? It's, it says Bazooka on the other uh, side? Is that it what says it is? Bazooka. Oh, it's, Bazooka. Uh, sure. It looks like it's a puzzle of nine yeah. cards, which shows the uh, Bazooka Wacky Packs uh, packages wow. card. And uh, on the back is the 1973. I'm not sure which series, but it's one of the series. Wait, I'm uh, sorry. Coke Aid? Is one of the uh, yeah coke <laughs> or kook sorry kook aid, kook aid. <laughs> yes l and k l and k are right next to each other so, so yeah so he's got the checklist here and you've got what's it uh dozen detergent chuck <laughs> full of bolts bread crust hash jlo dessert <laughs> or gadzuka gum uh six up beverage that must be the earlier version seven up yeah Maddie Boy, Quacker Oats, Wheaties Breakfast Cereal, Crust Toothpaste. <laughs> crust Toothpaste, yeah. And uh, you can Many look more. up the yeah, rest we'll, of Yeah, we'll take a photo of it and, and see. But, uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, I've never seen one of these checklists. Uh, I've, is a Wacky Pack something you collect? I mean, is it's, it something it, Wacky casually? Packs is one of those things that I was too young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know some older, like, uncles and relatives who collected them. Um, I never collected them that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I got in on the um, Garbage Pail Kids uh, bandwagon. But I have a few of the uh, vintage ones. And, I mean, an unchecked checklist from the early 70s is tough enough anyway. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> there can't be too many out there, yeah. That'll uh, sneak into my non-sports collection. Okay, so for whatever reason, I ended up with two Red Sox. <laughs> I have no, there's no logic to that. I no? don't collect them in particular, but. So I went with uh, a Fred Lynn um, bat card. And it says eight, but it's 50% off, so $4 All right. for that one. Um, I like the back cards that are non-traditional. So this is sort of in the shape of a shield, you'd say, I guess. Not a square piece, at least. Yeah. Um, it's rounded. It seems like there was some kind of machinery done to look that way. Yeah, that's early aughts upper yeah, deck. I'm exactly. not sure what set yep. it is. But... 2001. This is Upper Deck, he- upper deck Heroes of Baseball. Oh. Um, on the front is an authentic piece of bat used by Fred Lynn in a Major League Baseball game. And so, um, I cl- I enjoy bat cards more than um, jersey cards if I had to choose between. Um, and I don't know why. I just feel I I feel more confident that this might be have been actually a Fredland bat. I don't know. I don't know why, <laughs> as opposed to a Fredland jersey. I don't know. Anyway, because I I but then again, I guess all the bats look the same, don't they? So 
I don't know. Maybe I'll have to think about that a little more. But, um, anyway, so this was uh, a seller who has a lot of stuff from Louisiana was here. I've never been at a show when he was there, and he has a lot of stuff 50% off. So. Nice. Your turn. All right, my turn. I am a basketball fan. Wow. Uh, that. And one of my favorite players from when I was a kid was Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. And uh, what year is this? This is 1971-72 uh, Tops card of Wilt Chamberlain with the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has three or four massive creases through it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's beat all to hell, uh, but it was 250, and you're not going to find a original wilt that cheap, uh, even if there are creases and what appear to be glue stains on the back. But uh, this this is being added to my uh, vintage basketball collection, and I'm very happy to have it. And seller the seller claims its book value is. 35 so yeah if it wasn't if it wasn't beat all the hell <laughs> gone through a which i think might actually be a little low but you know i'm not going to complain yeah so my other red sock was is a archives from 2012 um i hope to find a companion card to this so i end up with fred lynn but this is where i started today i was hoping i could find some political player or something like that that would complement this. This is uh, an autograph of Bill Lee. Ooh, nice. Who is famous for his his politics. Um, uh, one of these fan favorite autographs from the return of Archives from 2012, I think, is the first year they sort of came back with it. Ah, okay. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy these a lot for the fan favorite autographs and autographs of players that you just never would ever expect it would actually get one, you know, since they didn't really have autographs at the time when they actually played. It says 10, got it for 5, so that's, that's my... That's very good. Uh, mm-hmm. Bill Lee is best known for being the uh, Bill Walton, shall, shall we say, of baseball. Yeah. If you catch my drift. Yeah. Yep. Um, very nice. I'm jealous on that one. I don't think this is a rare one, like the <laughs> Bob Uecker <laughs> one, so... And what'd you get? All right, last. Oh my god. Fox okay, presents so... <laughs> Superman 3. Complete wow. set. Five bucks. Okay, so. Oh my with, god, this is like Richard so. Richard Pryor. This is unbelievable. Right? Maybe Rich... Richard Pryor's rookie card. I'm not right, sure. Right, so I, I posted about Superman and um, and about how, you know, Richard Pryor has a card, as cards in the Superman 3, because he's in it, you know. And, uh,. I saw that that exact set today. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I should probably ask about that. See, that's almost too perfect, and here, here you have it. Yep. You, well, uh, you're too I, slow. slow. Yes, exactly. You hesitated. That's, you that's what I was saying to him. I said, the danger with you, you <laughs> and I going to the same card show is that we sort of like the same things, and we would scoop up the same deal, you know? That is correct. So, there is a Superman 2 set still yes, in there. Yes, I did see that. If you want it. I yeah. didn't buy that one because I already have over half of the Superman 2 set. So that's something I'll try to build card awesome. by card and regret forever. Well, there's no doubt. Set. I mean, you're getting a... That's 80, what? 83, 82, 80... something like that? Yeah, 83. Yeah. I mean, for less than five or five bucks, five there's bucks. no doubt. Yeah. You're the unquestioned winner today. <laughs> <laughs> I am a winner. <laughs> yes. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So we thought we'd do... Hopefully we'll be able to do maybe a full-length podcast later this week because you're on vacation, right? I'm so, on vacation. Um, so, but we'll do one topic here briefly in the car, and uh, that would be uh, 2015 Allen and Ginter. Uh, their full the full checklist came out, and so we're just gonna sort of go through and talk talk the main points and what we think. And um, I'm gonna skip almost all the baseball cards because like that's like. Okay. Sort of who cares? I mean, except for the highlights. <laughs> like, Madison Baumgartner's number one in this set. He's, he's a cover boy, isn't he? He's going to be on the packs. I think, I think so, yep. Um, and so I'm going to go through a lot of these that are sort of interesting. Like, for example, card 24, this year is going to be the Appomattox Courthouse for the Civil War Surrender Site. And I wonder if Topps got a Confederate flag on that card <laughs> and what they're going to do if there is. I don't know. Interesting, interesting. So, um, 
Um, a lot of, like I was saying, uh, what they consider heroes and champions and all this stuff is real questionable. Like, Frank Caliendo has a card now. He does good imitations, I guess, but... Yeah, I mean, he's basically... Does a... George Carlin have a card? Does Lenny Bruce have a card? I don't no, think so. No, but uh, you're not going to get autographs from them. Well, I mean, is that what you think the requirement is? That you have that, re- yeah, relic that's, inserts and that's the requirement. autograph inserts? Well, that's sad. But, um, I don't know, I think Bruce or Carlin would, or Pryor, <laughs> even... Pryor, uh, yeah. I mean, would, they all have uh, massive drug be, problems, right? Would be legend <laughs> enough to, yeah. uh, to to get in on one of the old cards, <laughs> but uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the the champions. Mm-hmm. It really depends on can we get a bunch of autographs? Yeah. Can we get cheap them too to give us a shirt <laughs> out of their yeah. goodwill pile? Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm not I don't really worry about the the second tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, D list, uh, yeah. Ginter, Ginter cards. All I care is Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> Hulk Hogan, Mr. Ivan Drago, T. and Mr. Freaking T. Yeah. Uh, I saw Clever Lang was in the set. Yeah. I've, I've lost it. <laughs> so, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, very, very happy with, with Rocky being the theme this year. Yeah, so there's Apollo Creed. Yeah, cards oh, 56, Apollo 102. Forgot all about Apollo. Yeah. Uh, Thunderlips. I had to do a double take. I completely <laughs> forgot that Hulk Hogan was called Thunderlips in the movie. Yeah, there's a couple of guys on Twitter who, <laughs> who were scared. <laughs> what that was? <laughs> so what is a Thunderlips? I can't, I can't Google this at work. Um, definitely another trend is that almost any reporter from ESPN is going to be included in this set. Yeah, and that's uh, This that's year we've all... got Buster Olney. We've got Zach Lowe. We've got... Else. Uh, Michelle Beadle, um, Keith Lowe. I mean, he makes sense because he does the prospecting list for ESPN. Um, but of course, but uh, top of that, Joe Buck's got a epic yeah. card now. That is going to be. I can't wait for the <laughs> what that's going to look like. Yeah. Um, another highlight for me, um, Mike Mills from REM. Yeah, that's has that's a card, a random card. I was looking uh, through the number thirty-seven. Yeah, I was looking through the autograph mm-hmm. list and saw Mike Mills uh, and uh, again about had a stroke. Yeah, right. So I mean, uh, they're, remember we're for, they're from Athens, Georgia. So yes, you know we have an interest in this. Um, <laughs> um, Bob, o- I mean David Cross gets one, but no Bob Odenkirk, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the Alan Ginter Codebreaker. Remember his name? Grant Miller. He gets a card. Uh, the hottest card probably in the whole damn thing is number 85. Uh, Chris Bryant, his rookie card, which I imagine is going to be short printed. No, um, I don't No, you think, think, so. think we're out of that now? I think we're, we're good on that. Uh, they short printed the heck out of what was it, Archives? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, th- this... It's it's a base card. It's not one of the high numbers, so I, I don't think there should be any short printing problems. Because they didn't do that with Harper uh, in what was it, 2012. So I don't see why they would do it with with Bryant. Hmm. Well, I hope you're right. Um, Paul Shear, a comedian who does one of my favorite podcasts, um, How Did This Get Made, has cards and autographs. Um, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, Paul like Shear, one. Cool. number 119. Nice. Um, what else? Uh, Bernie Williams. Did you see notice that? Yeah, Bernie, Bernie Williams, Williams included. with the uh, guitar pick. As really. a musician, yes. He's listed as a musician. Um, once card number 177. So that's... And, you know, maybe we should cover it now. That's about as close as you're going to get to a former player who's included in this set. Um, there's no, you know, there's no... Uh, like Ricky Henderson. There's no... Um, you know, any in the past have had Negro League players. They've had Hall of Famers. And this year, they, they did not include it. So, um, um, let's see. Which, I mean, that's okay. Uh, it would be nice if they were in there, but, I mean, they've done a lot of that in the past couple of mm-hmm. years. So yeah, it's okay. For them to switch gears and do something a little different with the set, 
it's fine. And to be honest, they're doing buybacks this year of all the sets. Yeah. So you, uh, you'll probably be That's able to, true. to get <laughs> a lot of former players uh, in your box of um, in your box of Ginter this year. Um, the Magna Carta slipped into the checklist as well as the fall of the Berlin Wall nice. for your non-sport collectors. Um, let's see. Uh, Val Kilmer. Oh yeah. Is a card number three twenty eight. Yeah, my Huckleberry. I mean, there's just so many amazing possibilities for. I mean, I know Ginter isn't exact like PD Americana, you know. Yeah. Where it's like they know what movie it's from and what have you, but I would give for like a Doctor, the Island of Doctor Moreau <laughs> relic. Oh yeah, and, um, and Kilmer's been in so many popular movies. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, if you're a Top Gun fan or a Batman fan or uh, uh, OK Corral, what am I, was that? Uh, <laughs> Deadwood. Wyatt or, or yeah, one of those. Uh, maybe. Yeah. My my most recent Val Kilmer. I mean, he's sort of gone off the rails a little bit, but. <laughs> he goes. He does a lot of straight to video, but uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yes. You ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah, that's so that's great. another good one. So great in that. Um, and Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. We can all scream baseball card bitches. <laughs> um, so again, no retired players this year. Um, each row, I'll include just for my own personal collection or whatever, has three different autographs available. Yeah, well, they, there's not tops m- finally... m- many of them, but. <laughs> Tops finally got uh, Ichiro uh, to sign on the dot line, which is dotted. So uh, yeah, he's he's going to be all over the set, which is good. Yeah, he's got Marlins versions, Yankees versions, and Mariners versions. Yeah, which is fine. And, they, they need to catch up. <laughs> and like you said, there's this is the tenth anniversary or the tenth set. Yeah, tenth set. Tenth set. So there's a lot of autos that are included from people previously featured in the set Mm -hmm. that don't they don't really have a card this year but they have autographs available so let's get really down to the important stuff which are the insert sets there's 13 uh, as i counted them of these sort of individual some are probably mini size some are regular size yeah 13 and counting yeah um i counted up the total of the five full size sets is uh 70 cards Hmm, okay. uh, three of the sets are 10 two of them are 20 cards there's probably going to be one or two retail only inserts that they haven't announced yet um, oh, yeah. like what was it the coincidences uh, from a year or two ago um, there are at least what was it eight uh seven or eight mini sets Mm -hmm. those are all one in five packs and there's always two or three unannounced mini mystery surprises yeah yeah. so there's one starting points which is your sort of typical one they've been doing many years yeah that's the the player where they're born from yeah 100 card set uh one and two packs uh Love this set because there's a Jason Hayward Braves card. No, oh, in that go. set, Jason and Brian get uh, get some love in that set. Which uh, one other thing that uh, I noticed about the base sets is uh, the Braves giant purge of the over the off season uh, has finally caught up to baseball cards because <laughs> uh, there's only seven Braves in the set. One of them is no longer on the team. One of them I think is out for the year. And one of them That's has rough. been demoted to uh, AAA. So uh, there are about five five Braves in the set that are actually on the, the roster. Um, another insert is uh, Ancient Armory, where you've got weapons. Um, i got to find a, the card for the Trident. That's definitely <laughs> one I'm going to need. Um, so like I mentioned before, you should be excited for Menagerie of the Mind. Which is fictitious characters. So you got yep. trolls, werewolves, unicorns. Unicorns, Pegasus, Pegasus. Griffins. That's there's all sort of ponies in all sort of thing. ponies and a zombie, whatever whatever that's going to look like. <laughs> um, what once would be? Uh, these are things that like flying cars, jetpacks. I was really surprised that they didn't do 
or they couldn't get the rights to maybe a hoverboard, Back to the Future <laughs> hoverboard, you know. Nice. Um, what once was believed, so these are, you know, the, the example I wrote on was a brontosaurus, like something science has sort of proven that doesn't exist. Um, great. The, the large size inserts this year are very fun. Uh, yeah. I got to say that. And um, if you're looking for a nice, cheap, fun set, insert set to collect, uh, the full size Ginter inserts are usually very easy to collect. Yeah. You can find them in a lot of dime boxes because since there's not a player or a person on them, uh, they kind of get lost in the shuffle. So uh, very fun, very cheap, very easy sets to build. Yeah, of the past few years, I'm usually like a year behind. So like I'll probably start building my 2014 inserts now. <laughs> they just, you can buy them all in one one auction on eBay per like set, you know, for just yeah. a few dollars. Um, Great Scott is another one, which is about science. Uh, there's a card for the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, keys to the city, which are the key pieces of you know the, of a city. So like, there's a card for the Space Needle for Seattle, Golden Gate Bridge for San Francisco. Uh, First Ladies, which is I'm excited about. I'm a political collector, and there's you know they not a lot of First Lady cards. Well, there's some First Lady cards that have lots of cards, like Eleanor Roosevelt yes. has lots of cards. But I'm excited. Card number fourteen is of Harriet Lane, who is not. <laughs> A person who was married to a president, but she's considered first lady. She's the niece of James Buchanan, nice. and she was considered the first lady at the time because he was a bachelor. So, I don't know. Interesting for for like five people out there who was. Um, <laughs> hoist. That's, that's the big. Um, yeah. Set. That's, that's there's 41. forty-one. Yep. Forty-one yeah. cards. So that's going to be the tough one to build, but uh, for a political junkie, it's, it's worth it. And there's probably going to be some pricey ones like Jack, Jacqueline Kennedy. Yes. Maybe Nancy Reagan, I don't know, Michelle Obama. Um, hoist the Black Flag for Pirates. Get your own pirate set. Um, uh, magnets, Barons, and Tycoons. Um, there was no Donald Trump card, unfortunately. I looked. <laughs> unfortunately. I did. I thought, are they going to do it? No, they didn't. Um, <laughs> Birds of Prey, which is sort of a standard thing they do. Um, yeah, that's the uh, animal yeah. set for the year. Which Mid is pretty cool. I've got two two local teams on that set. Oh, really? <laughs> um, mythological menaces. So that's evil, you know, like gods. Like, say, there's a card for Loki yes. from Norse mythology. And last but not least, the world beneath our feet. So more bugs and insects. Yep. Yeah, the cards. So... I totally am blanking on what the release date is this, of this. It's in... I think by the time soon, this... Right? Soon. By the time this gets online, it's either going to be released or, or about to be released. Yeah, someone's so, got it somewhere. Uh, I want to say the 22nd, but that might be wrong. But probably by this Friday, you'll be able to see at least a couple of packs leak out in, in Target. Um, are you going to do, uh, was it, Gint, Gint Cuffs this year? Uh, I don't have the funds for Gint Cuffs. No. If I can... Convince him to let me do three blasters instead of a hobby box, maybe. Who, do you remember who runs it? This uh, year? It sort of switched, hasn't it, over it's, time? It's Didn't bounced around to a couple of people. Fan of Reds? I can't remember. Yeah, I'll have to... Well, search gin, Gintacuffs, like Fisticuffs, but instead of Gintacuffs, it's sort of like a box-breaking contest to see who gets the like you know most perfect box yes. based on inserts or autographs or top loaders and all that stuff. I'm not top loaders. <laughs> box toppers, box toppers, and things like that. So, um, okay. I mean, definitely, uh, this is usually the set that I buy the most of during the year. So, it'll be nice to sort of actually buy cards. <laughs> um, okay. So, a couple uh, Q and A's today, and then we'll be done and done. So, our old trusty questioner Thor Zul asks, um, if you could choose any current card product to begin producing food premium food cards, or food premium cards, what would it be? Uh, my choice is Post Serial. Um, I mean, they've got a history of cards going back to the 60s. Uh, I collected the last <laughs> set that they came out with, which was 2001-2002, uh, uh, I think. And, uh, you know, Serial is one of the things we burn through quite a lot at the house with two kids, so... 
Uh, I, oh, I suppose you could get. Never thought of that. Yeah, you could get a lot of them. Yeah. So uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the post serial cards come back uh, when they were. Last time they had them in the early aughts was uh, they weren't printed on the box. They mm-hmm. there was a little package that came inside yeah. the box, and I think. Uh, they might have even had a die cut box so you could see the top card in the package. But uh, you know, either way, package in the box or cut them off the back. Um, yeah, it would be cool way, to I cut them off the back yeah. again. Either way, I don't care, but I, I'd like to see something like like that. I do love post um, the cards from the the fifties, you know, cutting it off the back, and I like the or is it sixties? Uh, that's sixty. 60s. Yeah, sixty. One, but I mean, you you've three. got two Kellogg's over there. You didn't choose Kellogg's. You've got two 3D right there, right? I, I'm no? more of a post okay. post fan. I mean, we, we if you remember back to a previous episode, we talked about 1955 baseball cards, and there are a lot of cards from surprisingly a lot of cards from meat products, meat and <laughs> dairy products. But I'm a. I mean, I really wish I really wish uh, Cracker Jack would get their shit together and. I know that there are rules, sort of the safety food rules, that you can't put the same stuff that when I was a kid you could put in your food. I don't understand why paper cards aren't a thing that they still do regularly. Because you could do even larger sizes, like the mini size tobacco cards, you know, shaped. You know, Cracker Jack, and I would buy Cracker Jack. I mean, if they're trying to expand their thing, make do something like that. But one, one set I really love from the 80s is the Purina dog food. Remember those yellow... Yes. They're like yellowish design, and they have the Purina stamp on it. For whatever reason, I had like ten, maybe Greg Luzinski Purina cards, and he's got this giant beard with this White Sox plastic batting helmet on. Anyway, <laughs> I just remember having that card. I really enjoyed that. I don't have a dog, so I would know to where I would get them. But yeah, right. I like I like I like that set, and I would I would you know I would mind something similar coming back, sort of non traditional answer, I guess. But. All right. And last but not least, Breakdown Cards asks, expound on scotch tape on top loaders. Okay, here's why we hate scotch tape on top loaders. When you put a piece of scotch tape on a top loader, whether it has a tab or not, it bonds at a molecular level. (laughs) Yes. And it will not peel off nicely. No matter what you do, even if there's a tab, uh... Some of that sticky goop is going to stick to the top loader, and then you have to, you know, bust your fingernails trying to scrape all of it off and then smudge all the goop uh, to try to get it as as clean as possible. Or you just have an ugly top loader, uh, or you just throw them away. Um, That is the main reason why we hate, (laughs) hate, hate scotch tape on top loaders because it just won't unstick. I mean, I suppose you could do something like put the scotch tape on your skin first so it picks up, (laughs) you know, the oil in the dead skin and will peel a little easier, but that's kind of gross. Nobody wants that. Uh, But really, painter's tape or masking tape is the way to go because (laughs) that stuff will peel off without permanently sticking and sometimes i mean i've had some uh scotch tape on top loaders that just peeled right off no problem but really the majority of the time it's either not going to peel off at all or it's going to stick or it's going to ruin the top loader so that's basically why i'm a cheapskate i like to reuse top loaders i don't just throw them out yeah so i understand what your your point about the reusing it but i mean as far as i'm concerned put the tape on because i'm not taking your used gross top loader like (laughs) i appreciate the reusing it part of it but there's just something psychological well first of all like when i come i bought the cards from the card show bring them home there's like a ritual of like taking them out and getting them into the appropriate new plastic and it makes me feel good when I rescue a card from like a horribly <laughs> like dinged and destroyed top loader that I've been to the card shows like so many times and touched by you know hundreds of people or whatever. I mean hundreds, yeah, right. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but I mean I'm I'm ditching that top loader. Plus I've had cards from eBay that have escaped the top loader without the tape. And granted, I don't want my cards touching the tape. That's another point too. But 
And I'm not really a germ person. Like, I don't I don't need to wash my hands uncontrollably. I don't need to use Purell or whatever, you know, after shaking someone's hand or, you know, do a, what do you call it, one of those fist bumps for uh, <laughs> Howie Mandel. But that. My, my cards need to be in newish top loaders. And so I, I just bought some top loaders in here now. So Yeah, like if you have uh, one of those old, beat-up, cracked, uh, yellowed from the sun, <laughs> yeah. dirt inside the top loader. <laughs> yes, and, dust. Go ahead I think and, one of these has dust in the... Go ahead yeah, and... Uh, right, Fred Lynn has a little dust. <laughs> go ahead and, and just tape that sucker up. But uh, I don't know. If it's a brand new top loader and it looks nice and it's got tape stuck on it, 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 it irritates me. So everyone has their irritations. Um, I like to recycle... Yeah, even the old crummy ones, uh, I'll, you know, put old crummy cards in. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I can see the point, but really team bags or, or painter's tape is the best. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you do want to have something on there to make sure that uh, the card inside the top loader uh, cannot escape. Uh, best is a, is a team bag. Acceptable is painter's tape. But uh, scotch tape and plastic top loaders are just a bad, bad idea. Yeah. Okay, so that, that is it for a truncated and abbreviated um, episode of the Trading Card Preservation Society. Um, hopefully we'll have another one uh, shortly for you. I don't know, I like this in-person stuff. It's a lot <laughs> easier to tell when the other person's going to finish talking. Um, so I'm... At underscore Matt F on Twitter, you're at uh, card at junk. junk. C A R D J U N K. And we have a Twitter for the podcast itself, which is Collect All Cards. And where? What else? You can find us on iTunes, um, Libsyn, Stitcher. So search Trading Card Preservation Society, and you'll find all the information. And that's it, I think. Any last comments? Hopefully the save. Yeah, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we got a good recording. Yes. Uh, my my phone already stopped at one point. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, yeah, everything looks good from here, and uh, we'll be back soon. Okay. Sooner than last time. Until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.